loosed by Steve Cross. This story will be published in Voices of Imagination 3, an anthology of science fiction, fantasy, and horror. When he felt a hand on his shoulder, he whirled around. You look lonely, she said. Loosed by Steve Cross, at Steve Across Words, click to tweet. When he felt a hand on his shoulder, he whirled around. You look lonely, she said. Sam looked into the brown eyes of the most beautiful woman he had ever seen. A little. Mind if I join you? She sat down before Sam could answer, but he did not mind. My name is Suki. Suki? Supposedly I was conceived as my parents were listening to the song. What song? She giggled. Suki, Suki, Sue. Sam looked at her closely. She had long black hair and full lips, which he wished he could kiss. He noticed her breasts as she leaned forward, her low-cut dress revealing them. He felt himself swelling. She put her hand on his thigh. How about buying me a drink? He looked at his own drink, a diet cola, and felt a little silly. Sure. Seven and seven, she said as the bartender approached them. Make that two, Sam said. Though stout, the drink had a certain appeal to it. Once he got past the initial bite, he finished it quickly. After he slurped down the last drop, he looked up to see the bartender. What do you need? The same. Make that too, said Suki. The time, he did not know how much, slid quickly by. Suki leaned forward and kissed him. We could have a good time if you want to. That is, if you Christian songwriters sin every now and then. Sam did not remember when he had told her that he was a Christian songwriter, but it did not surprise him because he definitely was buzzed from the seven and sevens he had consumed. I don't know. His head spun from the drink, his heart thumped. Did not God say that a man shall leave his mother and father and cling to a woman? And the two shall be made one flesh? He remembered something, do you love me? I've never said this before, but yes, I do believe I love you. He did not remember how he got up to the room, but there he was, staring at Suki's body stripped of all its clothes. Her beauty, he gasped. She lay on the bed. Come here, lover. He moved slowly as if walking through chest deep water, but he reached her and gently knelt over her and kissed her. When she touched him, he moaned, and then, they became one. As they moved against each other, he exploded. She grabbed him, her arms wrapped around his back, holding on with the strength of ten women. Her body, slick with sweat, pressed against his. Suddenly, light burst through the dark room. Sam turned his head and saw beside the bed a figure dressed in black. My lover. Suki cackled. Sam looked back into the face of a hag. Patches of oozing skin covered her face and her body. She licked his lips, he smelled her rotten breath. Some Christian, she said. He struggled to escape, but she held him fast. He felt a scream rising in his throat. When he jerked awake, sweat covered him. The stiff blankets wrapped tightly around his waist. His pajamas were wet and sticky. God forgive me, he whispered. Sam shuddered from the dream. Knowing he would never go back to sleep, he sat at a small desk and flipped the light on. Please, God, he whispered, help me. He sighed. Amen. Then, he took a slip of paper and read from it. When he did, peace flooded over him. My prayer is heard above the din. He paused, thought for a moment, and then smiled. He wrote, of human strife and human sin. God will love me for this, he said. The next morning he sat facing Dr. Daniels. Dr. Daniels smiled. So, you have discovered God? I want to write contemporary Christian songs. We all need something to believe in. Does this mean I'm making progress? Sam reached forward and grabbed a handful of candy from the dish on the doctor's desk. I think it does. It's about time. Sam, I wondered if you would try something for me. What? Sam immediately put up his defenses. For reasons of self-preservation, he did not put his complete trust in psychiatrists. I'd like for you to let me hypnotize you. Why? It will help me to understand what's going on in that mind of yours. I recommend it for many of my patients. God, should I do this? He prayed silently. The rotting Suki appeared in his mind. When he shook his head free of the vision, he knew his answer. All right, he said. You won't regret this. Close your eyes. I want you to imagine a beautiful place. Sam imagined what heaven would be like. Golden streets and spotless white buildings spiraled up into the sky. Near him, a crystal clear river flowed. 
he saw the glory of God everywhere, a brilliant white light as bright and warm as the sun. When he looked up into the sky to praise God, he saw a fluffy cloud settling to the ground. A little afraid, he touched it. Surprisingly, it felt soft and smelled like spring flowers. A voice whispered to him, inviting him to climb aboard it. No longer fearing, he climbed up the cloud and leaned backward. Its warmth and softness embraced him. The cloud lifted gently off the ground like angels floating into the heavens. He drifted off to sleep. When he awakened, his senses slowly came back. An unpleasant odor, like rotten trash, assailed him. You're mine, a voice cackled. He saw the man in black standing next to him. The figure raised a crooked staff. Fire blasted from it. Then, the cloud opened up and Sam began to fall toward flames. No! He screamed. Wake up! God's voice stopped his fall. When he awoke, he was in Dr. Daniel's safe office. The doctor, concern in his expression, said. Tell me about the man in black. I'm not talking about it. Sam stood. Dr. Daniels reached for a red button on his phone. You should. It's a sign of progress. This session is over. Sam walked out the door. Later in his room, he paced, agitated with Dr. Daniels. He bent over the song he was writing and tried to like it, but it sounded stupid to him. He shoved it into the pocket of his white pants. I am good at this, he said to himself as he paced faster. My parents would be proud of me. I bet he asks me about my parents. He will want to know why I hated them. He'll want to know why I wish they were dead. He stopped as anguish filled him. He dropped to his knees. I really didn't want them to die. He remembered the dark closet they locked him in when he was bad. Day after day, he dropped to his knees and prayed they would die. They did. Now, they walked the streets of gold. He knew he would go to hell if God didn't forgive him. Please forgive me. Amen. He stood wearily and sat down at his table. He tried to write, but no words came to him. Instead, he began to sketch. He was so caught up in his work he did not notice the time passing. Something thumped outside. Fear crept up his spine. When he looked at his drawing, guilt filled him. He had drawn a demon with drool dripping off its chin, pitchfork in its hand, horns, and a tail. The demon was black as night except for his glowing red eyes. He ripped the paper in half. Then something thumped outside again, and his heart suddenly jumped and began racing in his chest. He ripped the paper again, his heart beating faster. The faster his heart beat the faster he ripped the paper up as if the noise of its tearing would drown out the bumps in the night. When he finished, he could barely breathe. Thump. No, he said, terror gripping him. He crawled into bed and pulled the cover over his head. Only then did he relax, only then did his heart slow down, only then did the thumping end. Exhaustion filled him, he closed his eyes. Another thump awakened him in the middle of the night. The spare bedroom, he thought. What could it be? Ever so quietly, he swung his legs over the edge of the bed until his feet touched the cold, hardwood floor. Muffled voices passed through the walls into his bedroom. His door creaked open. Ever the cautious one, Sam dropped to his knees. A dim light shone through the doorway and illuminated the room enough for him to see that no one was coming into his room. Moving so slowly, he measured his progress by inches, he crawled toward the light. An hour must have passed before he came to the doorway and peered into the room. The shadow of a figure dressed in black towered over his parents' bed. The figure raised his arm over his head. A blade gleamed in the dim light. No. Sam stood and started toward the figure. The blade came down, blood spurted on the wall. Sam froze as the figure raised the blade again. He shook his head to clear the haze and lunged forward. Just as the blade sliced down, Sam tripped over his own feet and fell face first. He awoke in his room, safe and sound, lying on the floor. He breathed deeply until his fear went away. Dr. Daniels studied him. What do you think this nightmare meant? I don't know. Describe your feelings. I was terrified, but it was like I just stood there watching the black man. I couldn't do anything. The doctor paused and reached into his candy dish. He pulled out a couple of peppermints and offered one to Sam. I like the chocolate. I forgot. The doctor smiled, reached into the dish, and fished out some chocolate. Sam chewed it up quickly, like a scavenger chewing up a kill before some bigger, stronger animal takes it away from him. Tell me about your parents' death. I don't want to talk about it, Sam said. It might help. I said no. Will you try hypnosis again? It won't work. Sam reached toward the dish 
but Dr. Daniels pulled it away from him. Not now. The hypnosis? It won't work. At least try it. All right then. The doctor's voice nearly lulled him into the abyss of sleep, but something clicked in his mind that made Sam realize what the doctor was doing to him. He struggled to bring himself back. He mustn't know, Sam thought. The voice droned on. When I count to three, you will be completely under. One, two, three. Sam dropped his chin on his chest. Can you hear me, Sam? Yes, Sam said, sounding as hypnotized as he could. I'm going to ask you some questions. You must answer them. Do you understand? Sam's lack of a response did not seem to daunt the doctor. What was your happiest moment as a child? Sam did not answer him. What was your saddest moment? Sam said nothing. Were you physically or sexually abused when you were a child? Again, Sam did not answer. How did your parents die? Sam opened his eyes just a crack to see Dr. Daniels. His expression of disgust nearly made Sam laugh. Wake up. Sam opened his eyes and lifted his head back up. Did you find out anything? He asked. He hoped his face, which wanted to burst out laughing at any second, looked as if it were only anxious to learn some truth. You weren't under, Dr. Daniels said. If you don't get better, well, you know what that means. I am getting better, Doc, I am. His voice betrayed a hint of panic. Sam thought of something. I can prove it. How? Sam pulled a piece of paper out of his white pants pocket. You tell me. Could a crazy person write this? He unfolded the paper and began to read, we should know. We should see. He can be just what we need. He's the key that sets us free. Our Savior, our Lord, our God. Sam folded the paper and slipped it back into his pocket. I got a lot more ideas. Of course, I need to finish this. What's the name of the song? Dr. Daniels leaned forward, his hand resting on the top of his desk next to the phone. I think I'm going to call it, just what he is. I don't think so. What do you mean? When Sam took a step toward the desk, Dr. Daniels moved his hand closer to the red button. I listen to a lot of contemporary Christian music. So? That song is from the group Crossword. Sam's eyes narrowed. You liar. I'm not lying. You're just trying to keep me here. You know you can't leave until you convince us. Liar. Dr. Daniels hit the red button as Sam lunged toward him. Immediately the door flew open, and two orderlies dashed into the room. Just as Sam's hands closed around the doctor's throat, the orderlies reached him and pulled him off. Lock him in his room until he calms down. I'll kill you, Sam spat at the doctor. As soon as he heard the key turn in the lock, he regretted his temper and knew it would set him back even though he knew it was all Dr. Daniel's fault. If the doctor did not press his buttons, he believed he would not lose his temper and would have been released a long time ago. When he sat at his desk, he saw the song he had been working on. Liar he looked at the door. Liar. 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 Gonna burn in hellfire. Sam looked at his song and read the few words he had sweated out of his soul and heart. He goes with us on our trail. If we follow, we cannot fail. He clears away our pain and strife, gives new meaning to this life. He paused. Bullshit. He crumpled the paper in his hand and tossed it toward the waste basket. It hit with a loud thump. What was that? A distant sound came to his ears, faint at first. Thump, thump, thump. But as it neared, he could hear it clearer. Clop, clop, clop. As it drew closer still and the noise grew louder, Sam suddenly recognized it. He ran to the window and looked down. Much to his surprise, he saw four horsemen at the entrance. All four of them were dressed in black and covered their faces with hoods, but their horses. Their horses. His breath caught in his chest. One horse was white, another so red it looked scarlet. He thought of the Wizard of Oz and the horse of a different color. He stifled his urge to laugh despite the hysteria growing in his mind. The third horse was black. The last, a pale sickly off-white. He knew them. The four horsemen of the apocalypse. They meant the end. When he saw people walking by them, he wanted to scream at them to get to safety, but they pretended not to see them. Then, suddenly, the one on the black horse looked up at his window. He pulled back his hood. When he did, Sam's head spun. The man had no face, just a yellowed skull. Quickly, he closed the curtain on his window. He still saw them. They dismounted, and floating off the ground, they neared the front entrance. Though the door was closed, they passed right through it. Sam closed his eyes, 
but it did no good. He still saw them, floating through the halls, floating up the steps to his floor. Since it had protected him so many times before, he climbed into bed and pulled the covers over his head. Still, he saw them. They drifted down the hall outside his room. The orderlies, the nurses, and the doctors did nothing to stop them. They stopped outside his door. Sam curled into a ball and tried to make himself as small as possible. Then, they floated through his door, and the room turned ice cold. Dear God, please no. Please, God. No. He heard them stop at his bedside and closed his eyes so tightly he thought they would bleed. When he felt the cold under the covers, he knew they had found him. He didn't even get the chance to cry out before one skeletal hand closed over his mouth. Another grabbed his shirt and lifted him out of bed as if he was an empty potato sack. His feet kicking as the horsemen held him off the floor, he stared into a half-skeletal, half-rotten face. The monster's mouth curled into a half-snarl, half-grin. It had its hand over his mouth, so Sam could not scream or breathe. The pale rider pulled a cover off his bed, twisting it around and around in his gaunt hands. Dr. Daniels put his hand on the orderly's shoulder. Be careful when you open the door. Maybe he's learned a lesson. Maybe, maybe not. It still doesn't change the fact that he's a murderer. The orderly put the key in the lock. Are you ready, Doc? It sounds pretty quiet in there. The orderly turned the key and shoved the door open. Sam hung from the ceiling by a noose made from a twisted sheet. His feet gently swayed as if a cold breeze were blowing through the room.